mastering. What is it? Why should you do it? How do you do it? What is mastering? So, (laughs) mastering a song is all about taking your final mix and making sure it is radio ready. It means making sure that your final mix is at a competitive volume and that is sounding like other songs. So when you release it using DistroKid, or even if you put it on SoundCloud or YouTube or wherever, it sounds like it belongs. So when you hear a Foo Fighters song, and then your song, and then a, I was going to say Kanye, let's just say Muse song, because they're the sort of artists I like, then it's going to sit right in the middle of those. So that is what what mastering is. It's basically adding those final touches. And we'll talk in a moment about what those all are, but usually you're talking about things like limiting, which is a form of compression, and we'll show you all about what that means in a moment. Maybe some EQing. So maybe some of your frequencies are too harsh. You need to drop the trebles or boost the bass, do things like that. That's something we'll show in a moment. And maybe even a little reverb or stereo imaging and even some multi-band compression. These are all things that if if all those terms went, don't worry, we're going to actually give you a practical example in just a moment. So we've already covered a little bit of it, but why should you master? Well, number one is you don't need to. Like everything everything in music is subjective. So do you need to master? No. But do you need to understand what it does so you can make an informed decision about whether you should master music? Yes. So if you've got a final mix, here's how it works. You get your final mix and then you will master it. And that just usually means taking your mix, which might be, you know, moving up and down a bit. Maybe it's peaking up near zero dB, but if you've mixed it well, it's probably only peaking up to minus six dB or something like that. And then you want to move all that up, use some limiting and some compression to increase the overall volume of your sound. The reason you want to do that is basically everyone else does it. I know, you know, don't jump off the bridge just because Johnny at school jumps off the bridge. But in in terms of music, because a lot of people listen to singles these days instead of albums, and because listening on playlists is such a big thing, if you're in a playlist or if you're being listened to with a bunch of other music, you kind of need to make sure your music's at a competitive volume. Now, some people won't agree with that. Some people will agree. It's all a bit subjective. And you don't want to crush it. We'll show you in a moment. I'll give you some examples of how you can crush your masters and actually do too much of this limiting. You still want to maintain what's called dynamic range. So the loud part should still be louder. The quiet part should still be quieter. You don't want a sausage. You don't want this big square waveform. And again, I'm going to show you how to do it wrong in a moment, or at least not wrong, but how to do it the way I wouldn't advise so that you can see how you can do it if you do it the way that I would advise. So that is why you should master. You want to be at a competitive level. You want to make sure that your song is sounding good when it's played against other songs. So there's a bunch of different ways. Number one, and probably the easiest way is online mastering. Now there's a bunch of different places, probably the most famous or at least most well-known online mastering platform is called Lander. Now, it took me the longest time to realize that Lander stood for L and R, even though right in their logo there, it says L and R. (laughs) I didn't really get it at the time. So Lander is online mastering. Now, there's Lander, there's eMaster, there's something called Schnauz, which I've used before. I've got videos here. So down in the description, you can check out, uh, that's not the right one. Where's the one where I did Lander? Uh, Is it this one? There you go. Online mastering with Lander. So you can check that one out and see how I did there. Now, here's the thing. Online mastering, it might seem simple, and it is, but most online mastering platforms will only master your songs for free to like an MP3 file, like a compressed file. If you want the full WAV file, you're going to have to pay. So Lander's like that, eMaster's like that, and some are now using subscription models. So if you want mastering with zero thought process, if you just got your final mix and you just want to throw it up on a platform, get it mastered for free and get it done, then yeah, these things are cool. But there are other ways to do it, which we're going to talk about now. Number two, you can hire a mastering engineer because why not? Like there are people like uh, like my friend Ian Shepard here. Ian Shepard is an amazing mastering engineer. Uh, his, his YouTube channel, uh, Production Advice, it used to be called something else. I can't remember the name of it now, but Production Advice, he's got a bunch of stuff. He has The Mastering Show, which is a, a, a podcast, as well as a show that you can check out there. And he does a lot of videos there about that. And he's the king of dynamic range. So when I was talking before about don't squash your mixes, don't your final masters, don't just make it like a brick wall and just make it a big sausage. He's definitely all about that. That unfortunately, mastering has gone down this rabbit hole where People think that all they have to do is turn the limiter up to 11 and make it a sausage. 
and their mastering is done. Not the case. So you can, of course, hire a mastering engineer. I, I didn't want to just go through and give you all the options you have without saying that that is an option. Just like recording, just like playing, just like mixing, just like mastering. If you, are, if you want to be able to do these things, but you don't have the skills yet, there's nothing wrong with actually hiring someone else to do it for you. So keep that in mind. Number three, master in your DAW. So yes, you can actually master in your own door. And we're going to do this one. I'm then going to go into some mastering software. So we're going to look at Audio Master Pro, Grand Finale, and Final Touch, which are the three mastering platforms that I've used and recommend here in iOS. Now, there are other mastering apps that you can use for Mac and for PC. You can master in Logic. You can master in Cakewalk by BandLab if you're into that. Basically, you can do these same processes anywhere, but I wanted to give you some options here. So the first one we're going to do in terms of mastering software is mastering right in your DAW. And uh, once again, jump down to the description. There's a whole mastering playlist down there. So we're only going to scrape the surface here today, but there's a whole playlist of other options you have down there. Now, let's get started, shall we? Let's get into the practical stuff. You thought all the theory was a bit boring and dull. We're going to get practical here now. So here is my song called Work in Progress. Here is the final mix. So here's what the song sounds like. We'll turn it up. The work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. Guess we're all... So it starts like that. And then when we get to our like big final chorus, it really pumps in and it starts doing this sort of business. Figured out what we know. We all have time. So there it is. That's the final mix. Now, here's the problem. Problem number one in GarageBand. So we're going to master this in GarageBand to start with. Problem number one in GarageBand is there's auto normalization. Now, I'll show you what this does in a moment. But the first thing I've done here in GarageBand, and I've showed this a bunch of times, is down the bottom here, I've added an FX track. You can check this hack out. I've showed it a bunch of times here on the channel. If you have any problems, just message me and let me know. But what we basically do is we turn it down here. And you'll notice here that I've turned it down like 10 dB. So if we put this back up to zero, take a listen to it here. Nobody's got it figured out. It's like peaking and clipping and it's way too loud, mostly because I've got my mixer turned up. If we wanted to just master in GarageBand, can we do it? Sure we can, no problem at all. And this is relevant to any DAW. So this same process, if you're using Logic or Reaper or Cakewalk by VanLab or Pro Tools even, you can use this exact same methodology. And that is to export a WAV file, import it back into a project and master. Simple as that. So all we're going to do is tap and hold on this one. We're going to share it. We're going to share it as a song, an uncompressed WAV file, 44.1, 24-bit, and we're going to share there. And what we're going to do is hit the open in button. Now, while this is doing this, I'm going to tell you about an app called Audio Share. You'll notice that in a few of these methods, I use Audio Share. Audio Share is an audio editor. It's an audio recorder. It's an audio file transfer app. It is almost essential. You can do this without Audio Share. It just makes life quite a lot more difficult and audio share is like a five dollar app so if there is one if you're an audio producer on ios on iphone or ipad and there's one app you should just go and buy i say this about very few apps but it's probably audio share so it just makes it easier because i'm going to export this song and i'm going to throw it to audio share if you don't want to export to audio share you can save it to your files and use this exact same method to bring it back in. But I'm just gonna save it to Audio Share and then import it from Audio Share. But keep that in mind. If you don't wanna spend the five bucks, you don't have to. But why wouldn't you? Because Audio Share is amazing. All right, we're here. We're gonna go and tap Audio Share here. Again, if we wanted to save to files, we could do that. But we're gonna to go to Audio Share. This will send it straight out to Audio Share. And there it is. So here is my final mix. And what you can see here is at the start here, Pretty low volume, right? Let's take a look at it. Because we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured. So it's pretty low there. And as you can see through here, it only starts peaking up towards zero dB towards the end here when we start getting this big full on sound here. Oh, yes, we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got so we, we want to uh, we want to be able to tame this and uh, bring up the overall volume here. What we want to do is we first thing we need to do is actually trim this. Now, this is why I love Audio Share because how simple is this? We need to go tools and we need to go trim and fade because I didn't bother clipping the front of this GarageBand project because Audio Share does it all for me. What I need to do is grab this front handle and drag it here. Now, if I hold it still, 
look at this. It comes in here and I can decide where I want it to go. Now, you don't want it right up the front here, right against the front. You want to give it a little bit of breathing room. Usually, like just, so there's the because, there's the because. We probably want a because and a bit. So I put that about there and then you can test it. So hit play. No. Oh, hit this button. Sorry, hit the back button, then hit play. Because we're all just probably a bit close even. So we'll tap and hold again, and we'll just move it and give it a little more distance. Maybe move it to about there. Because what the reason for that is that some streaming platforms, when you start the song, they actually have a little tiny fade up, and you don't want to get that caught in your final master. So now let's play. Because we're all... That's better. It's like half a second. Take a listen here. I'll, I'll, I'll click when I hit play, and you'll hear how long it is. Because we're all just... A Perfect. That's going to be just enough that if, if someone's playing this and they hit play it, it goes, nah, it's not going to miss that first word. Now, I've already made the end pretty much where it needs to be, but let's just take a listen to this. There's my fade out. Actually, we can probably cut a little tiny bit from there. So we don't want too much fade out. So again, we'll tap and hold and we'll move it back a bit further. And you can see there, that's probably too much again. Tap and hold, uh, move it a little bit further out. We don't, we don't want to remove too much. You don't want to cut off your tail, your reverberation tail. Let's just take a listen to this again. I'll turn the volume up just so that we can make sure it's at the right level. Oh. Just make sure that all those tails have gone. Yep. Beautiful. We're happy. I'm a happy chappy. All right, so I'm going to turn the volume back down again. So all we need to do now is hit the save button here in the top right corner. That saved it out. And check out this. We've got this trimmed version. Work in progress 20, trimmed. And now if we go to the start... Because we're all just a work in progress. There is the file. This is what we're now going to use. So this is saved here in our audio share. If we want to use GarageBand to master, all we need to do is come back to GarageBand. We'll get out of that one. We're going to create a brand new track here. So we're going to hit the create song button here. We're just going to go to our audio recorder and we're going to come up the top here. Yes, we're going to turn on monitoring so we can hear our audio. We're going to come up to the top here, hit the track view button there, and we're going to import this. Now, if we tap here on the loop icon and what we want to do is browse items. So we'll hit the browse button there. We're going to go back here, back here, back here and go to audio share. Now, here is our audio share file, work in progress 20 trimmed. That is going to download and it's going to pop it right here. Now, I need to clean this up because these are all the gang vocals. <laughs> uh, where is it? Walk, there it is. Walk, work in progress 20 trimmed. So what we're going to do is drag, tap and hold, drag this in on a separate fresh track like so. And then if we zoom all the way out, check it out. We've got our whole song here in a GarageBand track. Because we're all just a work in progress. And now we can get at the mastering. So we'll delete that first track. Let's play around with this. Now, as you know, because we just talked about it, we, we're battling GarageBand's Garage GarageBand's auto normalization. So you can see here that here towards the end, it's already up at zero dB. So what I generally do when I come in here to GarageBand to master is I turn it down because we're gonna add some limiting. So what I'll do is I'll grab this and you can either grab this handle and turn it down like that which, uh, oh, now, that's right, I've got to double tap with my finger to go back to the standard. Or, what I recommend, to give you more precise control, you can actually tap on this, hit the settings button, and use your gain dial here to drop this down by, say, 3 dB, or you can go even further. Let's go down to, like, 5 dB, shall we? So, down 5 dB. So, we now know that we've got a little bit more headroom because GarageBand don't give you no headroom when you export. So, now when we play... Because we're all just a work in It's much quieter there. And when we come here to the final section, time and room to grow. Yes, we're all just a work in we've created ourselves some artificial headroom. So now the reason for that is we want to turn down those spiky bits so that when we add a limiter, it's going to bring everything up. You'll be able to see visually what we do here uh, in a moment. So we're going to go into our plugins and EQs in here, hit the plugins and EQ button. And what we're going to do, turn off that effect EQ. Now, in here, you can add whatever plugins you want. If you want to use a compressor, if you want to use the EQ, if you want to use any third-party plugins, all you need to do is hit the plus button here. Audio unit extensions, we can add Bruce Free, we can add, we can use a mastering plugin for goodness sake. I could use Audio Master Pro, which I'm going to show you in a minute, as an actual plugin here. So anything we want to use, we can. The simplest way, though, the, and the one thing that I recommend that you always do, 
is added a limiter. Now, thankfully, GarageBand has one built in, which is this one, the AU Peak Limiter, down the bottom here of your audio unit extensions. If you've never seen this one before and not sure what it does, this is what it's cool for. We're going to tap on the orange icon there. And uh, you could leave these at 0 0.002 or 0 0.005. That's fine. What I tend to do is just slow down the attack a little bit and speed up the release a little bit. So I normally go like 0 0.05 and 0 0.003 doesn't really matter but the thing you want to do is turn up the pre-gain here so this is going to re-add in the gain that we took away now why are you taking away gain and adding it in well with a limiter this isn't just a volume dial so you're not going to clip the thing that a limiter does it's like a brick wall it means that if you turn up the volume it's not going to go above zero db so now that we've added this in let's take a look at a listen at this track now because we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got a big... So it's starting to turn it up. But what we want to do, let's come here to this louder section and see what it's doing down here. With what we know, we all have time and room to grow. Yes, we're all just a work in Can you hear how that's really starting? Just that limiter is really starting to give it a little bit more push through there. And this is going to help us get our overall volume up to that radio ready level. Let's just take a listen. What I'll do is let's turn the limiter off. And I'll play it, and then I'll turn it on, and you'll hear the difference. So here's it without the limiter. Let's limit it. Hear how it's not just turning the volume up, but it's really balancing out. It's bringing, it's basically, because it's limited as a compressor, it's pushing everything down and then pulling up the overall volume. So with just that one change here, well, actually, before we do this, before we export, I'll show you something here. Uh, what we can do is with our AU, uh, with this limiter, let's just turn it up too far. So you can see here, I put the pre grain up to 5 dB. I'll show you what to do wrong. <laughs> so if you want it to sound bad, turn this pre gain up too much, and here's what's going to happen. Now I have done that way too high. I've put it up to 18 dBs of gain. And what it's doing, did you hear the pumping? Did you hear it trying to? What it's doing there is it's because it's this brick wall, it's bouncing against the wall. It's not letting it go over zero dB. Instead, it's bouncing up above it. And this is, I think, the easiest way to explain. The reason I show you this first is this is the easiest way to explain how a limiter works and what you can do wrong with mastering. Over compressing or over limiting will make your audio pump. You'll get distortion. You'll get artifacts. It's not cool. So turn this sucker down. So we'll turn it down and you can probably go a little bit higher let's just just for argument's sake let's go up to like 9 db here and you can see there on the meter here in GarageBand, it's really starting to push it so i'm going to export this version i would probably only do it to five or six but we'll do it to this version just so that you can see what this does so let's save out of this one we'll give this a name we'll just call it uh wip master uh, so that we know what we're doing here. And let's export this one. Tap and hold and share. Export the song, uncompressed wave, hit the share button. Now we're going to just open it in and send this one back out to, to uh, audio share. What you're going to see here is the difference. So yes, you should be mastering and mixing with your ears. Oh, it's done already. That was quick. Because it's only one channel, right? It's only one track. So it's easy to, a lot quicker to do that. We'll hit the audio share button here now and check it out, people. This is what mastering does for you. So... Instead of the original version that looked like this, this is what our mastered version looks like. So you can see there that we've got, in fact, we haven't really over, because we turned down the input gain, we haven't really over mastered this one too much. But take a listen here to what it sounds like now in the intro to this. We'll just come in a little further. Got it. Nobody's got it figured out. Nobody's knowing all they can. Now compare this to our original version that sounds like this. Compared to uh, something like, oops, wrong one. Compared to something like this. Now at this point, I want you to pause and remember that volume always sounds better. <laughs> so more volume is not always the best thing. It will always sound slightly better when it's got more volume than less. So uh, we can do that. I'll just show you something really quick here because while we're in here, 
If we wanted to overdo this, let's go back to our plugins. And remember, you can use EQ, you can use compressors, you can use anything else. You can add reverb, you can do whatever you want here. But if we go back to our peak limiter here, let's just blast ourselves. Let's put this to 20 dB. I'm not going to even listen to it here, but let's come back out here and export this one. So we'll go back to share. We'll share the song. We'll hit uncompressed wave. This time, open in, and it shouldn't take long again. There it is. It's done. We're going to open it back up in audio share. It's going to be master version one now here. Look at this business. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. This is the sausage. Reason I say sausage is that like, it's almost a solid block, right? Even this quiet part, even this bit that's supposed to be dynamic. This is not supposed to be as loud as this. Why would I want the start? Why would I want this now, guess we're all to be as loud as this? But guess what happens when you overmaster? <laughs> Look at the start of this song, for goodness sake. Because we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. And hopefully you're hearing the pumping and as Clayton Von Kluge is saying here, the pulsing that you're getting when it's hitting the top of oh, that brick wall. It's no good. You don't want that. So that's an example of what not to do when you're mastering. But tell you what, I would be very happy. I've actually done this with songs before. I've mastered legitimately here in GarageBand. All I've done is added in a limiter, added myself a few dBs of gain as a limiter, and then released it. And it's fine. Like, it's all good. So mastering doesn't have to be this mysterious art. And Ian Shepard's looking at me just going, he's crossing his arms like this. He's like, oh not just what it is, Johns. But <laughs> if you want a simple approach to it, you can. There is also mastering software that you can use. And there are three different bits of mastering software in iOS that I use and recommend that I talked about before. And we're going to go through all three of them right now. Let's jump in and look at Audio Master Pro. So we'll come over here. We'll load this one up here on our iPad. This is what Audio Master Pro looks like. Now, Audio Master Pro is good because you can just import your audio. You don't need audio share. You don't need anything else involved here. I think it's about between a $10 and $20 app. Should have done my homework beforehand. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll link these apps down in the description so you can check them out for yourself. So, But this is probably the cheapest and easiest way to master outside of just using your DAW. So with Audio Share Pro, oh, Audio Share, with Audio Master Pro, what do we do? Well, to import a song, we tap on this button here in the top left. And what we can do is just go import from iCloud. And what we can do is go back to our browse and whether they're on your iCloud drive or your iPad, they're in audio share files for us. So we're going to go there. We're going to scroll on down and we're going to bring in this one, the work in progress 20 trimmed. So that's the, uh, the file we're bringing in. It's going to import our file. And in just a couple of minutes through the magic of production, here it is. It's analyzing our audio. It's working out what it's doing. And there it is. So there's our waveform. And this is all that Audio Master Pro is. So if we scroll to the left, all the way to the left, you've got a custom EQ. So we can tweak the different EQ, uh, the different EQ settings and amounts if you want to do it a custom, or we can use one of the presets. So we've got presets in this for podcasts, for voiceover, for rock, for folk, for blues, for classical, for country, for hip hop, for electronic, for jazz, for Latin, new age, pop. R&B song. So there's a bunch of different stuff in here that we can do. Now, this song is more of a rock song than any other. By the way, there's links to full tutorials on all of these down in the description. So if I don't cover everything you want to know about, you can jump on down there and check those out. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to play this one. So we'll start with rock. Now, there's three settings for each. All of these dials, the dials, they do nothing. I'm sorry to break it to you, but the dials do nothing. They're just there for show. I know it's a bit weird because whenever you've got dials like this, you're like, oh, I should be able to twiddle every one of these dials. No. All you can do is decide whether it's one, two, or three. So that's why I started with this one. This is the simplest way to do this. So if we go with rock one and we leave it at 100%, let's hit the play button on this and see what this is doing. Because we're all just a work in progress. Now, the cool thing about Audio Master Pro is there's a compare button in the bottom right corner here. Let's go to a louder section here so we're going to get the, the, the idea of this. So we can just drag along here. And if we play, what we can do is if you hold down on this compare button, see how it goes red and your volume goes down? That turns off the mastering. And then if you release, it turns it back on. So if we hit play, I'm going to hold down to release it and then turn it back on and you'll hear the difference. Progress. So that is the most subtle mastering and the meter here, it's kind of dodgy. It doesn't really show you much to be very honest. Uh, but what you can do is you can dial up the percentage here. So you can see there I was at 100%. You can go to 200, 300, 
400. And this is basically almost like the ratio of your compression. So I wouldn't recommend going too high on this, but let's start dialing this up and see what it does, shall we? So we've got it on, we'll hit play and we'll dial it up. Just so I can So see how we're starting to hit the red over here at like 190%? That's probably too much. Let's back it off. Let's go 170. Still kind of hitting there. What about about 150? And let's try that. Still pretty heavy. So you can see here that this does a lot. The other thing is that you get kind of a mild master with one. And then if you go to two... You get a different kind of sound and to three. So they use different EQ profiles. So it's very much around trial and error with this one. But that being said, I have used this before and actually mastered a song. Let's uh, let's just maybe try the folk at like a number two and put it to like 170 and just see what this is. And once again, we'll hit the button and then I'll do the compare thing again. So we'll play and then I'll turn it off and on and you'll be able to hear the difference with the mastered and non-mastered version. Unmastered. So that's pretty good. Now, I've, I'm, again, I'm going to deliberately kind of over, overdo it. I'm going to overcook it to like 171% here and show you what this looks like. So let's export this out now. We're going to use the button in the top right again, this time the export button. Tap on that one. Now, this one's a bit weird. It's only got 16-bit wave or 32-bit HD wave. So you want to choose that one. 32-bit floats a bit weird. Most of the time you want 24-bit, but it's okay. Uh, Audio Share will convert it for you anyway if you need to convert it back to 24-bit, which I'd recommend you do. But we're going to export this one, and then we'll uh, we'll save it into the Audio Share file uh, folder, and we'll show you and take a listen to this master now that it has been done. So you can see it's very simple, very easy interface. There you go. We'll hit the Save button. We'll save it into our Audio Share and hit the Save button there. Let's go back over to Audio Share, like so and see what this one looks like. So if we scroll down, it is, it is, where is it? Uh, working progress, this one here, Audio Master. There you go. Okay, not actually too bad. I thought there would be more. I thought that would look more like this. <laughs> but it's actually looking more like the master we did here. So this was our, our proper GarageBand master, and this is our Audio Master. So a little bit more aggressive than what we did with our mastering in, uh, in GarageBand. But let's, let's take a listen to it here in Audio Share. Because we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. Not bad, yeah. Let's come in here to the middle where it's a, a, a louder section. Just a work in progress. Nobody's got it. Nobody's got it figured out. With what we know, we all have to. Definitely punches through better, doesn't it? Definitely get more clarity than if you're listening to something like your original file like this, where it's just sounding like this. Got it figured Nothing wrong with this, but you're not getting that more consistent volume because, again, you're getting these ups and downs. And you don't want no ups and downs, but you do definitely want something that's going to be right up there around that zero dB. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, Pete, I've heard about LUFs and I've heard about all these other monitoring things for mastering. Yes, there's a lot of different ways to measure masters. A lot of the iOS stuff doesn't have a whole lot in the way of the best metering that you'll ever want to get, but it works. And if it sounds good, it is good. As long as you're not hearing clipping and pumping and distortion. Grand Finale is up next, and we're going to uh, jump over here. We're going to go to Grand Finale. Now, Grand Finale is an app by our friends at Clevgrand. And you may be aware that I actually really dig Clevgrand. They do a lot of really cool apps, and uh, they do this one as well. They do the Visibel app, which is a great visualizer, and this is a... Very easy to use mastering platform. Here's, however, where you need to get your audio share game on because when you're importing into, into Grand Finale, as we're going to do here, we've only got the ability for iTunes import, extract from video, or audio share. So we're going to have to use audio share import here. And we're going to come down here and grab our trimmed version there. We're going to hit the import into app here. So we have a few options here. We've got our input and output and our limiter in the top here. We've then got our ability to add in distortion and compression and gain here. We've got a compressor, a multi-band compressor, a stereo tool, and an equalizer. Now we don't have time in this video to go in and do detailed tweaking of all of these. So instead, we're gonna use some presets. But if you do wanna check out the full video where I show all of the functions and exactly what all they do, check out the description down below. So here's our song as it stands. We're going to hit play. 
Because we're all just a work in progress. And you'll see at the top here, we do have a slightly better meter here. So we've actually got some decent metering here that we can actually see what's going on. You've got your Lufs meter, you've got RMS metering there as well. So you can switch. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all. To your Lufs metering or your RMS. Just a work in progress. Nobody's got which is kind of cool. Uh, but let's do some presets here. So we'll go down the bottom here to presets. We'll go to our mastering presets and you can do a bunch of stuff. So uh, there's sort of a different sort of genres and things here. But what, we, what we've basically got here is I'll generally start with either the gentle, medium or hard master. So let's bring the gentle master in here. Uh, gentle master. Uh, and uh, hit play on this one. Nobody's got it figured out. Nobody's... No now, you might be thinking, Pete, that doesn't sound gentle in any way, shape, or form. Here's the main reason for that. See this input gain? As you know, our input is up already pretty loud. So what I generally do in any mastering app, and you can't do this in Audio Master Pro, but you can in these ones, is turn down my input gain. Because this is basically assuming we've got some headroom. GarageBand don't give us no headroom. So if we turn down the input gain here and hit play now... So that's sounding a lot better, yeah. Now, if we go back to our presets, I'm just going to show you these simple. We've got the medium master here, and we'll play this one. You might be set up. Again, a bit full on, so we'd probably drop it down about 5 dB on the input. So, or you might get fed up. Maybe. And you can see that it's changing all of these things. We're getting different amounts of distortion uh, and compression and multiband compression and stereo of change. And you can, you can adjust all these. So if you wanted to add some more stereo width, for instance, on this mix, we can add that and then take a listen. Need a helping hand because we're all just... And you can hear it's giving it a whole bunch of stereo width. So there's some options in there that you can play around with. Now, the good thing about this, you can turn each section off and on, or you can turn the whole thing off and on. So if we're playing along here and we want to do, again, that A-B testing, we'll hit play, we'll turn this off, let's hit play, and I'll turn it on, you'll hear the difference. So I can progress, nobody's got it figured out, yes, we're all just the so I can progress, nobody's got it, nobody's got it figured out. There you go. Uh, and of course, you have a whole bunch of other presets here. You can spend a lot of time tweaking this. So this is kind of the medium. There's like the there's the light, the medium, and then the uh, the full buffet of mastering apps that we're going to have a look at in a minute. But let's export this one now. So we've just got some basic tweaks there. We'll turn that back on. We'll hit the export button. And again, we can export this as a 24-bit wave. We'll hit the save button here. It's going to render out this audio. It does take a bit longer to render than some of the other ones. Here it is. It is now exported. We're going to go and once again, we're going to uh, save this over to Audio Share. There it is. Hit the Audio Share button. It's going to open this one over in Audio Share. There it is. So this has probably gone a little bit heavy, as you can see at the start there. It's, it's really pushed it up here. But again, it's quite similar again. So every mastering process is going to do something a little bit different. But uh, yeah, you just need to, to find what works for you. So let's take a listen in the, the middle section here of what Grand Finale has done to this one. Just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got yeah, that one's really brought out the bass probably too much you'd probably want to go back and tweak out the bass in grand finale and remove a little bit of it down but it's pretty cool it's pretty darn cool that is grand finale there we have one to go and it is the grand daddy of mastering it is final touch it is the final countdown and it is final touch so this is the last platform we're going to look at here and it is definitely the platform with the most options now i've got a complete series on final touch which i've got linked down in the description it's like eight parts and it goes through everything because final touch has a pretty steep learning curve once again you got presets here that you can use which will show you in this part but if you want to learn what all the different components do. We'll go through them quickly here, but if you want to learn more about them, jump down into the description, check out the videos down there. So once again, to add a file here, up in the top left, we're going to tap on this button here. Again, we need to use Audio Share. It's It, it kind of just becomes our go-to here. So we're going to come into Audio Share. We're going to grab our WAV file. We're going to import it in. And here it is. It's brought it into Final Touch. Now, Final Touch actually has six separate modules you can use here. It has 
a pre-EQ. It has a reverb. It has a dynamics processor, which is a multi-band compressor. It has a stereo imager. It has another EQ, a post-EQ for after all your effects. And it has the all-important maximizer, which is a brick wall limiter. So it has all of those things working for it. Again, we're not going to go through the details of everything here, but if we go to preset, we're going to go in here and let's just go to our genre-based presets. So because this one is kind of rocky, I actually dig on the country rock preset. This kind of, It hits it pretty hard, but it, it'll show you what some of these things do. So we'll tap country rock here and see what it's done here. It's added some EQ. It's added some bass and some treble in the EQ. It's added some reverb. It's added some dynamics, some multiband compression through the mids and the high ends there. It's added a stereo imager here. It hasn't done any post EQ, but it has out of the maximizer. So once again, if we come into a louder section of the song, we'll turn it off. It sounds like this. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all young. Let's turn it on. So I can progress. Nobody's got it. Nobody's got it figured out. With what we know. And why is this one particularly cool? Well, even though we've only got the RMS over here, we've actually got the input and the output gain here. So as you know, what I like to do with this is drop down the input gain because I know that I don't have headroom in my garage band mixes. So let's give it like 6 dB of headroom and the input. And if we play that now. We all have time a room to grow because we're all... Because it's expecting that, it's, uh, it's now lower. But here's where we can pull down the threshold, which is our limiter, and start finding the balance here. Let's try that. Pretty cool, yeah. So that, that's the simplest form, is throw a, plug, throw a preset on there, see how it works. But of course, you can go into the pre-EQ, you can design your own curves here with an eight-band EQ, you've got reverb, you've got your multi-band compressor, which there's a lot to play with. And the cool thing about this is, it's not only got left and right, but it's got mids as well. You can actually use the, uh, uh, what is it called? I haven't used it in a while, but instead of just left and right, you can actually do the center and the sides, side chains, not side chaining. Um, mids and sides. So you can actually uh, adjust your mids and your sides there as well. But it's pretty darn cool. We're just going to export this. That, that's, that master sounded about right. And you know what? That's kind of what it's all about. Just making it sound good. So we're going to export this one. We're going to hit the button there. We're going to send it back to Audio Share. We're going to do it as a 24-bit, remember? 24-bit, 44.1 WAV file and hit export. And this is going to go out. By the way, um, Final Touch is about a $20 to $30 app, depending where you are in the world. So it does cost you a little more, but as you can see, you've got a whole bunch more in the way of options. That's a pretty good looking master. Again, we want to we wanna mix and master with our eyes, not our ears, but that's pretty darn solid. So let's take a listen. Because we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. Sounding good, yeah. Let's listen to this final chorus uh, in our a very, very quick Final Touch master. So I can progress. Pretty good, yeah. When you came from uh, the original song, so remember, this is what we had to begin with, this version here in this final chorus. Nothing wrong with that, right? But when you compare that and then you grab this and then you go... This is going to work better in a playlist when you're putting this up against some other produced radio ready songs. So there you go. In conclusion, what is mastering and why do you need to do it? Well, mastering doesn't have to be difficult. Mastering, and here's the, here's the golden rule. Ian Shepard, who I talked about earlier, says this. Mastering should be about doing no harm. It is about enhancing your final mix. If you have to fix stuff in mastering, you're doing it wrong. And if mastering is super complicated and complex and takes you days, you're doing it wrong. You just want to take all the good work you've done in the writing, the recording, the mixing, and just sprinkle a little bit of fairy dust on the top. And that is your master.